Hello and welcome to today's topic. We are learning about the arch of the aorta today. Arch of the aorta uh, begins, is a content of the superior mediastinum, a very important content of the superior mediastinum. And as you know, the superior mediastinum inferior boundary is the level of the sternal angle or the T4 lower border level. Okay, so the sternal angle is the uh, is the boundary. So below that you can see that this is the ascending iota. So the ascending iota continues into the arch of the iota. It is fairly simple, and the arch of the iota termination is by continuation as the descending thoracic iota. Okay, so the level of uh, demarcation of these two is the sternal angle. There is no actual demarcation. This is only a descriptive anatomical demarcation. There is no septum or a diaphragm like that. But it demarcates the superior mediastinal structure from the inferior mediastinal structure. The arch of the aorta in this picture, you can see that it is climbing up till the almost till the level of the middle of the manubrium sterni. So in the middle of the manubrium sterna, you can see it is giving off a very important branch and this branch is the brachiocephalic. The brachiocephalic is given towards the right side and that as it reaches the sternoclavicular joint, it will divide into the right subclavian and the right common carotid. The right subclavian is occupying the lowermost part of the neck and you remember that, that this that the subclavian triangle or the supraclavicular triangle, you remember that it occupies the subclavian vein and the subclavian artery. This is the point where, where it transiently appears in the neck and after that it through the cervical axillary canal, the subclavian will enter into the axilla. Okay. So that is the brachiocephalic and it is going towards the right side. Now next, uh, around just after it gives off the brachiocephalic, you can see it is giving off the left common carotid and the left subclavian, which are running almost just very close together. But as again it reaches the left sternoclavicular joint, it diverges into the left common carotid, left subclavian, taking its own way into the left hair part of the head and neck and uh, the left upper limb. So this can be remembered. One of the uh, mnemonics that can be used here is Arch of the iota gives off brachiocephalic, common carotid, and the subclavian. So you can remember that ABC. So this is an international mode. Okay, arch of the iota giving off brachiocephalic, common carotid, and subclavian. Okay, brachiocephalic, common carotid, and subclavian. So, so you can remember that ABCs. And remember also that C and S is uh, strictly to the left side, and brachiocephalic is towards the right side. There is no mnemonic for that, but that you have to remember. So uh, this obviously gives you an idea that uh, this is almost in the midline and the distal part of the arch of the aorta is just off the midline towards the left side. Okay. Now let us look at another picture again in Atlas Atlas that will give you a, a better uh, understanding. This is the manubrium sterna and this is a sternal angle. So this is the point of uh, the sternal angle level which is uh, said as the landmark plane which is used for understanding many things that is occurring within the thorax. For example, you have the second rib attached here, you have the uh, ending of the uh, ascending aorta, you have the beginning of the arch of the aorta, you have the ending of the arch of the aorta, you have the uh, division of the trachea into the two principal bronchi, you also have the division of the pulmonary trunk into two pulmonary arteries. So many events are occurring here. Also the division into the superior mediastinum and the inferior mediastinum occurs here. There is also the drifting of the thoracic duct which is just on the right side uh, in the vertebral column towards the left side over here. Everything is occurring at the level of the sternal angle. So let us look at the arch of the, specifically look at the arch of the aorta. You can see how much the ascending aorta and the anterior part of the arch of the aorta is anterior and the, the distal part of the arch of the aorta is posterior. So this arch of the aorta will thus uh, occupy in its concavity the left principal bronchus. This is extremely important. This is the left principal bronchus. Okay. Why well, I said that you are looking at the lateral view from the left side. Now let us get this idea better uh, in a dissection view. Okay. This is a 4D anatomy platform as you can see here 4danatomy.com. You can access this uh, in uh, the 4D anatomy website. The link will be in the description below. So what you are seeing here is the arch of the aorta. This is the anterior projection. You can see the arch of the aorta anterior part. This is the middle of the manubrium sternal level. From there you can see the brachiocephalic giving off the right subclavian and the right common carotid. You can see the right common carotid ascending up the neck just lateral to the thyroid and the uh, larynx. Okay, uh, This is the 
uh, left common carotid and the left subclavian. Okay, you can see at the upper border of the thyroid cartilage, you can see it dividing into the branches. Common carotid dividing into external carotid and internal carotid branches. This is subclavian. And you can see the how much the arch of the aorta is going backwards. Okay, so this arch of the aorta will obviously create an impression on the lung. Okay, so when you take the left lung, uh, you will see an impression on the medial surface, on the hilar part of the lung, you will see an impression created by the arch of the aorta. So this is also very important. The uh, left lung and the right lung, you have two arches. On the right side, you have the uh, azygos vein creating an impression. It's much a smaller impression uh, that will be like this. And on the left side, the impression will be created by the arch of the aorta, which is a much larger impression. Now, you can see the uh, the pulmonary trunk. Okay, You can see the ascending aorta here. You can see the pulmonary trunk here. And you remember in the heart, when we discussed the heart, the ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk were side by side. You can see that relation here. So the pulmonary trunk, as soon as it emerges, it divides into the right and the left pulmonary arteries. Okay, This is the right pulmonary artery. This is the left pulmonary artery. It is almost like this, like a like a slanting T. It is not just so horizontal, it's slightly slanting that the right pulmonary artery is slightly at a lower level, the left pulmonary artery is slightly at a higher, higher level. Now, if I dissect into the next layer, okay, if I go to the next layer, okay, you can see the arch of the artery is mostly removed. Uh, you can see the the trachea, which is almost 10 centimeters in length, it is dividing into the right principal bronchus and the left principal bronchus. In front of the left principal bronchus, you have the division of the pulmonary trunk. So here you can again see the slanting division of the pulmonary trunk into pulmonary arteries. Right. Let us look back into the pulmonary, into the arch of the aorta. This is the arch of the aorta. In the concavity of the arch of the aorta, you can see another very important structure usually asked in anatomy exams. This is the ligamentum arteriosum. Ligamentum arteriosum is connecting the concavity of the arch of the aorta towards the uh, pulmonary trunk. To be precise, it is almost to the left pulmonary artery, beginning of the left pulmonary artery, very close to the pulmonary trunk. Okay, uh, So that this it is almost a horizontal structure. This is the remnant of the ductus arteriosus, which was a very important shunt uh, within the fetal circulation. So this closes uh, functionally after birth and structurally within uh, weeks after birth, this will close into a fibrous remnant and that is the ligamentum arteriosum. The, so let us look from anterior to posterior. You have the pulmonary trunk, you have the right and the left uh, pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary trunk division is occurring in front of the left bronchus, uh, left principal bronchus. Uh, uh, that Behind that left principal bronchus, the arch of the aorta is like this. It, it is jumping off the right pulmonary artery and the left principal bronchus. Okay, right pulmonary artery, artery and the left principal bronchus is uh, occupied in the concavity of the arch of the aorta. Okay, another relation of the arch of the aorta is that on the left side you have the vagus. The vagus will be running like this. Okay, behind the root of the lung. Root of the lung will be occupied by the pulmonary artery pulmonary veins and the principal bronchus. So behind that root of the lung, you will have the vagus, which will be descending down like this, but it is giving off from here, it is giving off a recurrent laryngeal nerve. And the recurrent laryngeal nerve of the left side will be hooking the arch of the aorta and the ligamentum arteriosum. And the recurrent laryngeal nerve will then further climb up the tracheoesophageal groove. So after it hooks the arch of the aorta and the ligamentum arteriosum, it will climb up the tracheoesophageal groove. So this is the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. So usually it is asked uh, which recurrent laryngeal nerve is longer. Okay, the left recurrent laryngeal nerve is longer. Why the left recurrent laryngeal nerve is longer? You don't have an arch of the aorta on the right side usually. Okay, uh, it is only an anomaly when you have a right side arch of the aorta. Normal profile is that you have a left sided arch of the aorta and the left side of arch of the aorta will pull the recurrent laryngeal nerve downwards. So the left recurrent laryngeal nerve is more longer and hence more prone for injuries or lesions or diseases of the thorax. So obviously the left recurrent laryngeal nerve is more prone for lesions for recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy. 
Okay, all of this is occurring because of the arch of the aorta. So if you look at the arch of the aorta, the uh, the I mentioned about what are its branches, what are its relations, how is the left principal bronchus and the pulmonary uh, trunk and the arteries related to it. I also mentioned about the ligamentum arteriosum. I forgot to mention about the ligamentum arteriosum is a, uh, is found beyond the uh, branch of the subclavian okay left subclavian is given off only after the left subclavian is given off you have the uh, ductus arteriosus okay that is also important when you learn about patent ductus arteriosus and the relations you need to know that you have the left vagus on the left side and the left recurrent laryngeal nervous on the right side in the tracheoesophageal groove and this also has a as a impact on that the the location of the uh, aorta uh, on, of the arch of the aorta on this side Okay, on this side, will slightly push the trachea towards the uh, right side, and the esophagus will be slightly indented. Okay, both of the, them are important. Okay, this is one of the reasons why the trachea is lower part of the trachea is slightly deviated towards the right. In medicine, you usually learn that uh, the trachea has a slight deviation towards the right side. Okay, one of the reasons is the location of this relatively firm structure, the arch of the aorta, towards the uh, which is on the left side that is slightly displacing the lower end of trachea towards the right side. The esophagus is roughly intended. This is one of the normal constrictions of the esophagus, roughly at around 22-23 centimeters from the incisor teeth. That is also created by this arch of the aorta. You can see this picture also. You can see the lateral view of the mediastinum from the left side. Here also you can see uh, this is the root of the lung where I mentioned as before. This is the bronchus, the left principal bronchus. This is the uh, pulmonary veins and this is the pulmonary artery. Okay, And you, uh, you can see that the vagus is running behind, behind the root of the lung. Okay? And uh, you can see another nerve descending down. This is the very important nerve, the phrenic nerve, phrenic nerve which is going to supply the diaphragm. The phrenic nerve will be running in front of the root of the lung. Both these nerves, the phrenic nerve and the vagus nerve, is displaced both from the trachea and from the esophagus by the arch of the aorta. So this point is very important. Thank you.